Hey friends, Will here, and in this video, I wanna take a bit of time to talk to you about how I rig my Sony a7S III up for handheld shooting. Always a tricky one, trying to find a balance between cost, functionality, and the features that rigging can add to your setup versus the sort of time it takes to set up, the difficulty that comes with transporting a camera rig. Over the past couple of years, I've tried to put together what I think is a fairly slimline handheld setup. And I'm gonna talk you through all of the bits and bobs that I use and some of the trade-offs that I've made. And once I've built the rig, I will also let you know some of the considerations which I might consider changing in the future. Starting off, already on the camera, this is the Sony a7S III and I've got it in the small rig full cage. I like this cage because it's really slimline, so you can see on the right hand side where you hold it, um, it doesn't kind of feel like bulbous, you know, it feels really comfortable to hold. It's got loads of mounting points all over it. I used to use a half cage when I used to shoot on the a7 III and I just sort of missed the additional mounting points that you get with a full cage. So when I got the Sony a7S III, straight away I knew I wanted to go for the full cage. Um, the first thing that uh, I do with my rig is I've ended up in an odd situation where, an annoying situation really, where I've got multiple tripods and ball joints which use the Manfrotto 200PL quick release plates. And they're pretty great, but obviously I don't exclusively use them. I still have certain things like the gimbal, monopod, which use the Arca Swiss or Manfrotto style uh, plates, which can be a bit frustrating. But that aside, uh, the first thing I put onto the cage is this PL 200, sorry, 200 PL Manfrotto quick release plate. So we'll put that on the bottom here, like so. And then while we're at it, we'll put a lens on the camera. So when I'm doing any kind of handheld shooting, I love the versatility of the 24 to 70. This is the Sigma Art DGDN 2470 f2.8 all the way through slightly more budget option than the sony gm but still a really great quality lens quite a chunk but i really like this for the versatility whenever you're sort of handheld shooting run and gun you're not necessarily sure what you're if you're shooting for coverage then this just allows you a lot of versatility so so we'll pop this on like so Something else you might have noticed here actually is uh, on all of my end caps for my camera bodies and my lenses, I've created these really cool vinyl uh, stickers which have just got my name in my sort of logo style and my contact number and website. So most of my gear's got these stickers on and it just means that if ever I misplace something, there is a chance that I will get it back it also means if I'm on a shoot with multiple people and we've got gear being handed around, used on a shoot, then I know what is mine and what's not. So that's really handy. So now we've got the lens on like so. Um, one other thing to mention, really helpful, recommend everyone has one of these, is the small rig camera tool. This thing, quite grubby actually, because it literally lives in my pocket on every shoot, it's in my camera bag all of the time, and it's got everything you could ever need. So there are other uh, brands and options available. I think Small Rig have come out with a more fancy version than this one that I've got, but this is just so great. Never again am I using a coin <laughs> to try and uh, get a tripod plate off or whatever, because you've got the tools that you need for rigging up your camera. So highly recommend that as an option. So we've got our camera lens and it's in the cage. We've now got our base plate. So in order to solve the issue that I mentioned earlier, which is having the Manfrotto 200PL quick release plates on a lot of my equipment and the um, Arca Swiss style on other things, 
Um, I actually found this as a bit of a solution. So this is a Manfrotto, well, this is actually a generic, so fake Manfrotto uh, quick release plate, which I have screwed on to um, a Manfrotto or also Arca Swiss compatible uh, long base plate, which has actually come off my monopod, which is super helpful because when I use this, I can pop this onto the base of my rig here and it serves a couple of purposes. So first of all, it gives me quite a nice kind of solid base to hold onto. And um, second of all, if I am shooting handheld, quite often I might be in a scenario where I do take the monopod just as it can be helpful for getting some more stable shots if possible. So this goes straight on there. And if ever I need to quickly put this on a tripod, if it's one of my tripods with the Arca Swiss system, this goes straight on. And if it's a non Arca Swiss tr tripod that I'm using, so my Manfrotto uh, quick release ones, then obviously I can just very quickly remove that plate and that pops onto the tripod. So yeah, um, not a perfect solution by any means, but a practical and easy solution. And also it has the benefit that this, you can see here, um, it means that the camera sits quite nicely, which I do find important if you're out and about on a shoot, you need to place your camera down for a couple of minutes. You want it to be stable and secure on whatever surface you're putting it on. So that just works really nicely to achieve that. So, okay, so we're, we're getting somewhere now. So the next thing that we've got is um, on older rigs that I've done for previous cameras, I've used the um, sort of attachment points on the cage, which require you to screw things into them. And that's all well and good and it's really secure. And generally they're more cost effective options like the top handle that screws in, for example. Um, but, if you're needing to pack down your gear and fit it in a bag to transport it from one place to another, maybe you're changing locations, then it can become a little bit uh, onerous to keep getting your tool out and unscrewing it. So when I rigged this camera out, I've actually gone for a NATO rail system wherever possible. And it's such a time saver. I won't be uh, going back now I've done this. So uh, I've got this particular uh, NATO rail here and I've got several different sizes and this just pops on here. Uh, make sure I'm getting it central. And then with my trusty small rig tool I can just screw this in. Same again for this one. Now I really like these small rig NATO rails because they've got the little spring clips, which is just an added bit of security for when you're sliding things on. So I've got another one of these uh, NATO rails, which I'll occasionally put on the right hand side of the camera here. If I want to put a side handle on this side of the camera. Most of the time, I don't like having a handle on this side. I prefer the direct contact with the camera and the ease that I have to the access to the buttons and dials on the camera. So I normally keep the right hand side of the camera just with the cage, which is nice and slim, as I mentioned before. So I've got the NATO rail on the top here and on this particular cage from Small Rig, the left hand side here is already a NATO rail, which means any NATO accessories can clip straight onto that bit there, if you can see that. Right, so moving on, we've now got our uh, NATO rail on the top. So the next thing that I would add to this is the uh, side handle. So again, small rig, I've got this lovely wooden number here. And I like this one uh, because it has, again, it's a NATO handrail, which means it's really quick and easy to put on and off. And it's got a cold shoe mount on the top of it, which means I can attach additional accessories, whether it be a wireless mic receiver or 
a shotgun mic, for example. So um, I like that lovely, comfortable to hold and nice kind of contoured shape to follow my hands really comfy and in case of emergency this is a lovely little touch in the base of this side handle there's a little hole with a magnet and inside that is an allen key so if you don't have your multi-tool with you you've got permanently got an allen key in the side handle so this can slide on the side like so and then just simply tightens up so it's super quick and easy to put on. And that means that if I'm holding the right hand side of the camera with my hand and then the left hand side, I can hold with that handle, tuck my elbows in like that and I can get some really steady shots like so. Uh, so next up, I do like to use a monitor wherever possible. So I've got the Atomos Shinobi, which is a 5.5 inch monitor, super bright, really nice, loads of kind of focus and exposure um, assistance tools in there. I love using the false color on this monitor and it uses just the MPF battery. So you can see here, I've got a fairly chunky MPF battery in there, which lasts incredibly well. Um, so this, I've then got, again, small rig, the NATO monitor mount, which is really nice. This screws into the monitor. like so, nice and snug. It's got this nice um, kind of cog handle here, which means you can always get it tight and make sure that your monitor is nice and close. My monitor covered in fingerprints, which is awful, but there you go. Um, and then once that's on, you can see it just slides straight on to the NATO rail and then locks into position. And the added bonus of this as well is that this is the spring-loaded version. There are other monitor mounts from Small Rig and other manufacturers that require an Allen key to lock them in position, whereas this one has got like a tension system so I can adjust the angle of the monitor without um, needing to loosen anything. Um, and you can t you can lock it off if you tighten the Allen keys really tight, then you can lock it off, but you don't have to. And if you get the tension just right, then you can have it flexible like so. So that's the monitor. And then I've got this uh, coiled HDMI. Um, this one is from Amazon. I forget the brand, it wasn't expensive, but it's a really short, thin coiled um, HDMI and it's got the 90 degree plug on the end which I put into the monitor and then on the other side of the camera where the HDMI goes in fact I'm just going to take this side handle back off again I've then got the HDMI lock which holds the HDMI plug really securely into the camera um, I'm always really worried that HDMI will kind of get knocked or snagged on something and yanked out of the camera and damage the socket. This way, it's gonna damage the cable if that happens, which is obviously a lot cheaper to replace than the HDMI socket on the camera. And in fact, I was on a shoot just a few days ago where that very thing happened uh, to a camera that was on set. So um, well worth having a HDMI lock. This particular one is really nifty. It's just got one quarter 20 thread, which is on like a sliding system, like so. And then it's got ARRI locating pins. So what you do is on the side of the camera, if I flip this onto the side for a second, this actually screws in here. The pins fall into location on the cage. And then you can plug in the HDMI. And as you tighten this up, it pinches the HDMI cable. So you can get it nice and snug. And it just means that if that catches on anything, it, it's going to rip the cable before it damages the camera. So I like that for a bit of peace of mind. So now I've got that back in. The side handle slides easily back on as well. Oops. And then we can tighten that up like so. So 
we're, we're kind of getting there now. You can see it's like, you know, it's not the smallest of things, but as far as camera rigs go, it's pretty bare bones. I've got my camera, I've got a nice versatile lens, I've got a decent screen so I can see what's going on, and I've got a side handle which I can use. So I guess the last thing that we probably want to add to this is audio. I've got the Rode VideoMic NTG, which I really like for this kind of thing um, because it's got the uh, stepless gain control right there on the mic, and it's got the safety track, which means if I'm in a, a location where the sound is quite unpredictable, I can use the safety track. Um, and it's got lots of other features, which I won't go into in this video, but yes, I like this. And what I tend to do with this is put it on my side handle, like so, and then I can tighten that down there. And then you'll see here, we've got a few little things going on with these wires, which is not ideal. So I've got these, which have just been an absolute lifesaver. So I don't know if you've ever seen these before, but they're basically Velcro strips and they've got a hole in one end and you can wrap them around. You get them off Amazon for sort of, you know, a pack of 50. They're kind of like cable tidies. And uh, I just really like having one of these around the cage on the camera, like so. And what I tend to do is poke that end through there so that this is actually attached quite firmly to the cage and it kind of attaches itself. And then what I can do is I've got my uh, HDMI cable coming down for the monitor and I've got my mic audio, which I can just thread through there. And then I can fold that bit of Velcro round and on itself And that just keeps those cables nice and neat and out of the way. There we go. My mic's not quite tight. Tighten that up. And then, of course, the mic just plugs in here, like so. So yeah, that's that's pretty much how I use this camera for handheld shooting probably, well, most of the time, really. Um, there's a couple of variations. If I think I'm going to be shooting at low angles quite a lot, then um, there's a couple of variations that I might do to this. So I what I can do, and again, this is the great reason for having the NATO rails, is I can unlock the monitor, slide this off, like so and then what i've got here is i've got the small rig top handle now this is the nato top handle it's got this lovely wooden um, grip as well it's quite long as far as top handles go and um, you can also rotate the direction so at the moment i've got it with the handle sort of facing backwards towards me if I'm holding the camera, but you could obviously spin it round and have it sort of further forward if that's what you're into. Um, but for me, I like having it this way round. And then on the end of the handle, it's got Arri locating point, And I've got, again, another NATO rail, just a really small one that you can see here, still with the little sprung safety bits here. Um, and that means that I can literally take the monitor off like this, slide on the top handle and lock that into place. And then with the monitor mount, I can spin this round and just pop the monitor onto the end like so and lock that into position. So now um, slightly chunkier, taller uh, system. Uh, but if I know I'm gonna be shooting, you know, low, then the top handle is quite helpful, but I don't always need that extra height that that handle gives me. So yeah, that is how I rig my camera for handheld use with or without the top handle. Uh, loads of small rig products used in this video. Now, small rig were kind enough to send me some of the stuff that I used on my rig, but I've been a big fan of all of their stuff 
for a long time. So um, it's great to have a few extra bits and pieces to play with and um, rig out. Uh, so as far as the future goes for the rig, um, a couple of things I might uh, consider. So the first one is you'll notice I have not added any additional power to the camera. I'm still relying on the internal battery of the camera and then I've got the external uh, battery in the monitor as well. So I would like eventually to get a V-mount battery and maybe put a different base plate on this rig with a V-mount plate which would mount sort of behind the camera somewhere. Um, the reason I haven't done that though is because most of the time when I am shooting with this particular rig at the moment it doesn't tend to be sort of for extended periods of time um, and already I'm quite conscious of the weight of this rig so it's a real balance between the convenience of not switching out batteries versus um, the additional weight that I have to carry around to have a V-mount. So that was the consideration there. The other thing, quite nifty this actually, um, the Sony MPF, I think these are 700, 970s, MPF 970s. So these were um, off Amazon and I didn't realize when I bought them, but these have actually got USB power in them which means that in a pinch I can run a small USB-A to USB-C cable from my monitor to the camera and this MPF battery will then power the monitor and the camera at the same time. So I've done that um, a couple of times as well. Um, you still obviously have to have the battery in the a7S III for that to work. Uh, but yeah, pretty nifty in a pinch, as I say. I tend to make sure I've got batteries for the camera. Uh, but yeah, good to know that these MPF batteries have got that additional input in them. So, um, and then I guess the only other consideration is um, if I'm uh, shooting outside, there's been a couple of occasions where I would perhaps like to add the matte box onto this rig, um, but generally I've managed to get away okay with just using the lens hood that comes with the Sigma 24-70 at the moment. So uh, maybe in the future a matte box might be a nice addition, uh, but not having the matte box does mean I've got really easy access to the lens for when I'm using a variable ND filter, which inevitably is most of the time if I'm outside. So um, yeah, I quite like the simplicity. Again, it's always the trade-off between rigging it out into this big thing that's amazing and everything, and then it becomes really heavy, really cumbersome. Um, and you know, even this is uh, getting fairly chunky. Um, but what I like about this is if we need to change locations and I do need to put this in my normal kind of over the shoulder camera bag, then it's fairly easy for me to unplug the mic and undo this bit of Velcro. And I can just slide the side handle off like so, and that can go in my camera bag as is. And then similarly, the top handle just slides off like so and can go in the camera bag. And then that is obviously just the body of the camera going in the camera bag. And, um, and then yeah, at the other end, it's super quick to just slide these items back on, replug them in. It's not like, you know, I don't need my tools. I don't need, you know, loads of things to plug in and everything. So it's like really just trying to balance that simplicity with functionality. So yeah. That is it for this video. Um, I hope it wasn't too rambly for you. Um, I hope you got some value out of it. If you haven't rigged your camera up, then I would highly recommend that you do. If you're shooting handheld or shooting events and kind of that kind of thing, then it's really helpful to add this extra functionality and just makes your camera much more kind of practical extension of yourself, which is super helpful for these kind of things. Um, links in the description to all of the components that I've mentioned in this video. So 
do head down to the description and check them out. And if there's anything that I'm doing with this rig which you think is a bit weird or that I could improve on, um, or if you just want to tell me about how you're rigging up your mirrorless camera, uh, then jump down to the comments. I do read all of my comments, so it'd be great to see you down there and have a chat about rigging up cameras. So that's it for this video. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching and um, I'll see you next time.